Thanks very much. Um, I know that the, today's session was scheduled to uh, end at 3.30 and we're now running a bit over time. So I will try to go through this as quickly as I can. Um, still respectful of the, of the content and uh, um, I, I just want to take a moment though uh, before I begin and very much thank the organizers uh, for today's event. Uh, I've, I've found it extremely interesting and very worthwhile and tremendously well organized and it's an honor for me to be here. Uh, I don't uh, hold myself out to be an expert but uh, I'm happy to participate regardless. Um, I'd also like to take a moment and just go sideways and introduce Leslie Wilson. If, Leslie, if you could stand up. Um, Leslie is a uh, senior trade officer with the Department of Foreign Affairs responsible for Turkey. Uh, I'm going to talk about a report that the government just put out last week and it'll be Leslie's job to implement it all. Uh, but in the report, should, in the report it, it says that, that uh, countries that have been identified as priorities will be given more resources. Uh, the, uh, uh, the, the government plans on, on taking what it spends now, trying to spend it smarter and uh, better, and, and Turkey has been identified as one of the priorities. Um, those of you that know me know that I'm a, I'm a liberal by background. I was a member of parliament for 11 years, I served with the liberal government, appointed to cabinet by two prime ministers. Uh, at one point I was minister of state, or secretary of state responsible for Turkey and Central and Eastern Europe and the Middle East. Um, when I was first briefed by the department, we were talking about the appropriateness of, of from time to time bringing your wife on trips. And, and one of the officials just said straight up, he said, Minister, if you're going to take your wife anywhere in the world, take her to Istanbul. So that immediately moved Turkey up my priority list. And, and uh, no, 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 I didn't. But uh, uh, my wife, Christine, was, was very much honored to have gone. I've been back a couple times since without her, but she's determined that we'll go back as a couple before too long. Um, I'm also going to ask uh, Mike Ward to jump in. Uh, on, on any but on what to say because Mike uh, uh, has many years experience uh, uh, dealing with the Department of, working for the Department of Foreign Affairs. He finished up as Consul General in Istanbul and, and really our, our challenge as Canadians will be uh, to make uh, what's in this report apply to Turkey and make the, uh, very much try to encourage the government to follow through on the commitments that it's, that it, that it's making. And I'm reminded of of two scenarios. One, um, when I was in Brazil once as minister, we were talking about sort of what are the challenges that Canada faces. And a, a, a Brazilian in very blunt terms says, well, your biggest challenge is just to make sure you get noticed on a map of North America, which means, you know, that Canada's often overlooked. People see this side of the, or this part of the world as, as the United States and maybe something else that's kind of vague. Um, and I think your challenge from a Turkish perspective is that, that Canada will always be wedded to the United States in terms of its economic interest, uh, uh, just by the nature of our geography. You can talk about changing trade patterns and all you like, but in my lifetime and the lifetimes of all those that follow me, whoever, because of the geography, uh, the United States will always be our priority. Probably about 80% of our exports go to the United States. 80% of that 80% is in automobiles. Um, the, the, the trade relations are, are huge. Uh, after that, you have our relationships with Europe uh, and the established markets. And, and it's, Turks need, just as Canada needs to do work to make sure that it gets noticed when it goes out to the world. I'm saying, uh, Turkey, if you're interested in Canadian expertise, can, uh, uh, Canadian standards, uh, uh, Canadian products, uh, Canadian relationships, it's going to take some work as well because the typical Canadian may not know much about uh, uh, the world outside of Canada. Uh, we, sh we share a parochialism that's not uncommon with many people in the world. Um, you can make a reference with the Ottoman Empire, they have no idea typically what that means. So we, it's a, it's a, it's, and, and we need to work to overcome those things. But this document actually, I think, um, provides a roadmap on how to do that. And as I said, I'm a liberal. I'm still a liberal. Uh, this is a conservative government put that put this out. And I, I really, I think it's noteworthy that from my perspective, they really did get it right. Um, I'm just going to try to take you through it fairly quickly and then answer any questions that you might have with Leslie and, and Michael's help. The essence of the report, it's called the Global Markets Action Plan. 
It outlines the importance of trade. It points out that Canada's economy relies on 60% of its GDP for trade. I mean it, and then it says straight up that it's, it focuses, this, this document is to focus on markets of greatest importance. And importance is defined as highest growth, sources of capital, technical talent, um, countries that we can do free trade agreements with. Uh, and they also took, and they determined this in part through guidance from the, from the Canadian sector. Uh, the emerging markets, so, so the, the, the report identifies the United States as important, it identifies Europe as important as the established markets. And then it goes to the rest of the world and says that these are the emerging markets and identified 20 countries. Uh, two were in Europe, Russia and Turkey. Uh, as you might expect, it identified chi China and a number of other, other countries, but it's, it's important that Turkey made it into the list. Um, in general terms, it's, it's identified emerging markets that had the best potential for success um, and where government support could provide the greatest impact. Uh, provi priorities for foreign direct investment technology and regional trading platforms. So just to go back for a second, so it's saying government support could have the most amount of impact. So there the government is putting in black and white that they will support Canadian trade initiatives to Turkey. Uh, we don't know to what degree yet, we don't know how budgets will change within the department, but they're making a commitment. Um, as a regional trading priority, you know, it's obvious to everybody in this room, I don't need to repeat it uh, too, too much, that if you want to do business with Iraq, it makes sense to go to Turkey. If you want to do business with the, with the stands, it makes sense to go to, to, go to Turkey. Um, so I can... Other things that the government is committing to, um, well, I've already mentioned aligning staff to priority markets re via redeployment and strengthening of the Trade Commissioner Service. So, Leslie, you're going to get some help. Um, organizing sector-specific trade missions in priority markets so we can look for, at some point in the future, they'll take uh, more aggressive uh, uh, initiatives to, for trade uh, missions to Turkey. Realigning funding programs to priority markets and deepening partnerships with key uh, industry associations. Enhancing alignment among Export Development Canada, the Business Development Bank of Canada, the Canadian Commercial Corporation to ensure effective financing support for Canadian businesses in priority markets. If you don't know what those um, three organizations do, I, I would suggest you educate yourself. Uh, they can be extremely useful in, in fostering uh, exports and and in this case, export uh, to Turkey. What's also of interest, it said, um, the tools for promoting this. It mentions free trade agreements, which have been mentioned before, but we're also putting in, in paper that air transport agreements. When I was in government, it was sort of well known that you didn't get a trade, you didn't get an air, you didn't get an enhanced or an improved air, air, uh, uh, air transport agreement unless Air Canada signed off. That wasn't the official word, it's, it, wasn't, it wasn't written down anywhere. But before Canada would, would sign on to something, our first priority was, is this going to damage your Canada? Um, Transport Canada, which would take the lead and still does, as far as I know, on, on transport agreements, had a whole a group of people to determine how it, what would be the impacts on Air Canada. Uh, they didn't have a group of people to study, well, what would be the benefits to Canada as a whole? Um, um, so. Uh, sorry, it hasn't changed? Okay, it hasn't changed. So governments, the rest of the government, like foreign affairs, uh, trade people, would have to fight to say, well, let's look at, at the benefits for the, for the rest of the country as a whole. Well, here they're saying that they recognize it, that transport agreements have benefits to the economy as a whole. That, that may not seem like much, but it's significant if, assuming that they, they live up to that. Um, other things that they're, they're saying, some of this has already been flagged, advance and conclude F free trade agreements with major economic impact, improve international connectivity for Canadians. Uh, again, there's a reference to, to air transport agreements. Pursue foreign investment prom promotion and protection against uh, agreements or FIPAs, which would be part of a free trade agreement. Um, and then reinforce the multilateral system through next generation agreements uh, within and outside the World Trade Organization. Um, given that uh, we're past time, I just I wanted to say enough that um, 
um, would whet your appetite to actually read this and then invite you to hold the government to account. Uh, it's, I think it's an important document uh, and, and, and one that we can use uh, as a starting point in terms of lobbying the government to, to do more on the, on the Turkish front. On a, on a personal note, I also want to say one other thing that I've noticed, um, one thing I've noticed in the, in the last number of years, and that's that the Turkish community in Canada is far more confident in speaking up, uh, speaking up on behalf of Turkey. On, on, uh, um, I was engaged uh, um, originally by the Turkish embassy to help uh, foster some confidence with the Turkish community in Canada so that they could counter some of what the Armenians were saying. Um, and at the time I got started, you could, you could see that generally people were somewhat fearful. Uh, there had been the assassination in Ottawa, the perpetrators hadn't been caught. And they were nervous about talking about what they wanted to do. At one, at one point, I had somebody saying, well, we don't want you to get hurt, you know, so don't, don't, don't uh, speak out too much. And this last uh, April, there was the, the normal rally across from the embassy. Um, but there was, all, by Armenians, but there was also a rally of, of, of Turkish Canadians. And that, I don't think it ever happened before, or at least in numbers. And, and I think your community is to be applauded uh, for having the confidence, having, having a sense that, that you have a right to be heard, and not being intimidated by outside, by, outs, by, by others. Uh, um, uh, I know that the ambassador, to his credit, is, is he doesn't want this issue to be a distraction, and, uh, but it's still there. Um, there are elements within Canada, unfortunately, that, are, that, that will work to undermine you um, for no good reason. There's, there, there may be reasons, but they're not good reasons. And I'd really much encourage uh, members of the Turkish community in Canada to, to continue with that, that sort of a, uh, more confident stand. Um, and I'll, I'll leave on that. I'm, as I said, delighted to have been here today. I want to finish up with a, with a positive message. I, I think uh, Canada-Turkish relations uh, uh, are, are um, sort of inevitably going to grow, and I think depending on how much work we're prepared to do, we can accelerate that. And, and uh, so th thank you very much, and then uh, throw it open to any questions, either for Leslie or Mike or, or myself. Thank you.